anyways, I'm gonna talk to you about Bill Turner, who I've spent the last seven years with him, working every week at the museum. He's a retired, well, was a retired Washington State University professor. So that's my personalized tribute to Bill. So Bill was born in, in 1940 in Los Angeles. And uh, he moved as a teenager to um, uh, the Bay Area. And he did his undergraduate studies in arts and physical education. Nothing related to entomology. As a teenager, he was a football player. And in school, he became uh, one of the top country's cha champions, football players, as you can see on these newspaper clip. So 1962, the two loves of his life, he got married to Sandy. And 1962, he took Howell Daly's uh, introductory entomology courses. And these are excerpts of his actual class notes from 1962, uh, which I found in his basement, along with tons of other stuff, which I've preserved. So how old Daly, uh, so Bill taking that course discovered entomology and well, so what the football and becoming a professional entomologist. So throughout the sixties, he uh, did his master's and PhD with how old Daly. And at the same time, his family started growing his son, Greg, and his daughter, Christy, and eventually his two granddaughters, Anissa and Safa. And you'll notice his name, Turner Raman. When he got married to Lippi Raman, he added the name. And Lippi Raman, she's from Bangladesh. And Bangladesh is a country I've been working in for the last 10 years. Uh, there's really close connection. And of course, Cowley and Jackson, they were Bill's best friend. And uh, uh, he often would come to the museum full covered with cat hair on this <laughs> jacket. I knew that he had been holding, uh, Jackson had been holding, uh, sitting on him while he was watching uh, the news or reading the newspaper because he was keeping up with the news all the time. So from 40 years, the following 40 years, Bill was a faculty at Washington State University. He taught insect taxonomy, immature insect taxonomy, a rarely taught course nowadays, introductory entomology, a very, very thorough teacher as Ross uh, can uh, testify. Uh, and uh, he also trained a number of graduate students, including Steve Daimari and Norman Woodley. And uh, his research was on lower brachiosaurans, and he looked after the museum uh, there for many years. So I met Bill in exactly on 13 of November, 2015. I remember the date, but I didn't remember the date. I found the date on this, uh, what you see up there, which is a little excerpt of Bill, <laughs> one of Bill's numerous binders of notes that he would take every day. So Bill, for seven years, we did a lot of projects together in the museum. And uh, he, uh, uh, here is sorting Deptera to family level, gigantic miscellaneous diptera, which even dipterists don't feel like uh, sorting, uh, he did. So he did a lot of, uh, and then uh, numerous graduate students and other people came uh, to the museum and Bill mentored many of them. So when there'd be a group, I would start discussing, arguing with Bill, and I knew how to press the right buttons to get into heated arguments with him. And the two favorite topics, one was our differences in our approach to teaching, because it was all school, and 
we have to be realistic in the current context. So we'd have endless argument. And I would argue for the show to entertain the group. The other one, you mentioned Donald Trump. And you would get him going into his left-wing political speeches. And uh, that was really great. I miss all that. Uh, Bill, we spent seven years together in the museum. And how I knew that excerpt you saw, it's that big binder there, thick like a phone, a phone book. Each museum visit, he would come when he back home, and I didn't know at that time, I found that in his basement. He would write an elaborate report of everything he did and all the issues and even uh, refers to discussions and conversations we had. And here it's in six pages for 23 of August 2019 because there's a list here of material he borrowed to study. The three next pages were the three graduate students who dropped by. He wrote a report of the discussions, all from memory when he got back at home while his cat was sitting on his lap. <laughs> Bill, incredible. Uh, so he passed away on 24th of February, and in his will, he designated me as a caretaker of his legacy. So his basement, that photo, you can see all the piles of papers and uh, all the binders, and so much stuff. So I took uh, the, the task, it took me a good 10 days of coming every day and slowly cleaning through, sorting the papers, moving the collections to the bar museum, the books and so forth. But I kept the important things, including over 50,000 curated specimens in five cabinets with specialty on diptera, all identified to species. That's rare you'll get there, that kind of uh, uh, donation. And micro coleoptera, from Burmese extractions, identified to species of all, Selafid, Lyodid, and all that, so quite amazing. And hundreds of books of monographs, including antique books, like Histoire Naturelle des Insects, dictée par Justin Bacard, 1835. This book, it's the very first use of the genus Bactrocera, which is the main genus in they sign fruit flies I work on. Among his stuff, I found piles and piles of, of sheets of his detailed field collecting notes. Uh, every field trip he would do at least one page of detailed notes and later in his life, he, when he started understanding computers, he started typing them. So this why the binders of field notes. And uh, all I saw, any of these specimens in his collections, you know the context of the collecting. In order to keep his office at WSU as an uh, emeritus, he ran the pest diagnostic service. So this many binders of pest diagnostics, I have them in the Bar Museum, the Bill Turner Archive, unpublished Diptera taxonomy notes. So Bill did not publish that many paper, but all these binders, his research notes, and these are undescribed species of, of uh, uh, embedded. It's a wealth of data. That's a treasure. Had I not been there, all that might have gone to the dumpster. His close collaborators were actually people I've known for a very long time from my days in the Canadian National Collection, Brad Sinclair and Jeff Cumming. And both of them, not long before Bill died, described new species they named after Bill. Looking for a way to digitize these binders of research notes to them so that they can, it can help them in their work. Well, he left uh, a uh, synoptic, complete synoptic collection I have, but his main office at Washington State University, all of these, Empedids and Rajonids. It's an extraordinarily large collection. And of course, he died without returning his loans, so. <laughs> oh, brutal.
collection curator's nightmare, and that fell in the hands of Rich Zach, so he's been returning the loan. The other thing he had was old growth uh, forest litter samples, and he designed his own Burley's extractor, had an entire row of them in the garage, and he extracted leaf litter samples and put in vials, everyone, including the mites and everything, all sorted by groups. So I, there were over 7,000 vials of immature insects and soil arthropods that was keeping in this basement. It's insane. This white are his teaching material from his teaching. So I teach insect taxonomy and identification. Down here is Bill in 2017. He helped me with some sections of the course. Very, very generous with his time. Among his teaching material, the most amazing things are these guided entomological tours. Completely detailed guided visits to sites in different parts with maps and everything so students could follow it like a tour guide as what to look at and what insects they will find. We even had a tour guide for uh, winter visits around the campus and here's photos. So he gave one of the tours in my class in April 2021. He's a interest email serve. You may recall this one. I would like to produce an illustrated key to the tabanids of either a state or region of your choice. I am a retired research scientist, PhD entomology, and I have both time and equipment to produce such an illustrated key. Is there any interest in that key? I saw the email. I called Bill immediately and he said yes. And then I responded 50 minutes. After that email, I immediately responded saying, yes, we'd like to do Idaho, Washington, and Oregon. So it's Anthony Thomas who published the Tabani Day of Canada in Canadian Journal of Arthropod Identification. You see the, the photo quality that Tony takes. His uh, skills to take photos are really amazing. So he's a true artist of photography. So I immediately wanted to say yes. Why Bill accepted in that project is because throughout the 70s, he ran CO2 baited malice traps all over uh, Washington and Oregon and uh, uh, Western Idaho. And out of that, he published an annotated checklist and he published an uh, illustrated key to the species. And he said, oh, I have also some uh, uh, distribution data and then he came a couple of days later with this box here. All the primary data from <laughs> his uh, uh, field collector. I transcribed all that data, this many cards onto Excel and I geo-referenced everything and uh, I did the mapping and I digitized all the specimens of tabanids from uh, University of Idaho and from um, and from uh, uh, College of Idaho, Bill Clark. And Bill looked at all the specimens and confirmed the identifications. And I produced the maps, digitized, and Tony did all the photography and keys. And he did that, and I did not know, look at this note from 30th of April. Not to bow with, to the diagnostic of cancer, I decided to continue my regular life and went to the Bar Museum this morning. I knew he was sick. As time went, I saw his mood changing and I saw him getting more exhausted. Then it's in early August that Bill finally told me, yeah, I have terminal cancer, but uh, we should finish that project. And he did, he, came, he kept coming to the museum. This is the last day he came to the museum, 11th of December, 2021. And Sandy had to drive in because he was too tired to drive 
but he still came and finished the identification. Then I had all the data, all the identifications, the maps, and I worked with Tony, and I didn't see Bill for a while. A book was published, Lifetime Supplement Volume 4, which you can download your free copy. I had a series of them printed. Six days before Bill died, Sandy called me, said, oh, Bill wants to see you. So I went to Coleman. I went to see Bill. He was lying in bed. And it was right in time. It was a couple of days after I received by mail the printed copy. I was very proud to go and hand a copy in hand to Bill. And then I read the foreword written by Steve Dimery himself as a personal tribute to Bill as his master supervisor, because it's Bill who got Steve interested into lower brachycera. And Tony wrote another email uh, this year, the similar email, and it's Gary Steck and I working together with him to do the Tabani Day of Florida. Uh, to use a French expression that doesn't translate into English textually without losing the essence, Bill, c'était mon vieux crab préféré. He was my favorite old crab. So old crab. So vieux crab in French, it's an expression for these cranky old characters who I would provocate into arguments. So Bill was my favorite old crab. And here I'm wearing my alter ego costume which is a, a product designed and produced by Ellie Itching, who was my undergraduate assistant until 2020. She's an artist, so she made that fruit fly bath. She makes entire suits as well, costumes. So she made the fruit fly uh, head, and I wear that when little children come to the museum. It adds drama. So I made a Joker card out of that. And one of you, check below your chair, you'll find a joker card. Come on, Shaya, you have to lift your chairs. Come on. Whoa! Here, there's your copy. Thank you. Terry sat on the seat, then I saw him go into another chair and I thought, he's not going to be lucky tonight. Uh, I had a talk with him. He was too loud, yelling at me across the street. That was a great talk. <laughs> <laughs>